I'm standing here on one of the busiest streets in Los Angeles, the television capital of the world, and have yet to be propositioned by a Hollywood hooker. Where are they? Am I not good enough for them? But every single day, tens of thousands of people drive by this seemingly nondescript building, completely oblivious to the fact that up there on the 10th floor lies Hollywood's most mysterious and powerful group. And no, we're not talking about the Church of Scientology. Who has the most power in TV? The most power in TV? The advertisers? Isn't that NBC? I would say it's more of comedy. Station-wise, NBC. Fox. Fox is pretty big now. Um, well, I mostly watch cartoons, so I really don't know that much. Corporations. But I have no idea. Do you guys know what the most powerful force in television is? Comedy? Comedy? The electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. The most powerful group in television is Nielsen Media Research. The ratings are a hotly debated topic. Just how important are the Nielsens to network television? The Nielsens are the absolutely most important thing in American commercial television. It's the Nielsens that determine how the money flows. And corporate America, which controls television, including advertisers, the big corporations for networks, the big networks and producers, it's exactly what determines how much money is going to go where. In terms of uh, legally, broadcasting in the United States is supposed to be in the public interest. I think the Nielsen system is, uh, is a system that works for corporate America and less for the public interest. Let me tell you a little bedtime story. It's called The Nielsen Ratings and how those rat bastards canceled my favorite TV show. Camera crew gather around. In the 1940s, Arthur C. Nielsen retooled his radio listenership measuring device for television. And it hasn't changed much since. Whereas, the way people view TV has changed tremendously through an ever-expanding number of channel choices and improved technologies from VCRs to digital video recorders, not to mention DVDs and the internet. This has caused a three-way bum fight between the networks, the public, and the Nielsen Media Research Group. And the only happy ones are advertisers who get cheaper and sometimes even free commercials when the ratings are low. Golf, my guess is, is probably fairly low rated. Why is golf on television? Not because golf, the American public need to see golf, not because golf is this great experience, but because golf delivers a certain demographic audience. That demographics being older skewing males with money. So programs, television programs are not just rated according to the demographics of age and sex. They're also de rated according to the financial, the income of their audience. So low ratings can be fine if you're delivering the Mercedes-Benz crowd, if you're delivering the people who have money uh, so you, to, to invest and so the financials, Charles Schwab is interested in them. That's how television works. I'm standing here on the campus of UCLA, home to one of the world's most prestigious film schools, to interview the chairman of the screenwriting department, Richard Walter. And don't worry, I'm TiVoing today's Anna Nicole Smith show, so you can just settle down, okay? How do ratings come into play? They need these numbers so that they can uh, figure out how much to charge for the advertising have some sort of justification to determine what they call CPM, the cost per thousand, how, what does it cost to reach a thousand people. We think TV is such an expensive place to, to advertise, but it's actually the cheapest uh, medium because it reaches uh, so many people. Now I understand you're a TV family uh, for a company that was bought out by Nielsen called Arbitron? A guy shows up at my door and says, "You are." 
address has been spewed out as a um, in the sample of homes to be among the uh, Arbitron arbiters for the week. Our home would represent like 900,000 homes. If we turn on our TV, that's like 900,000 TVs go on as far as they're concerned and what we're watching, they're watching. Um, and we said, sure, we'll do it. And well, now I never had any intention of filling out the thing faithfully. I just don't believe in it. I'm an academic and I know how they make up the research. It's made up, not all of it, merely most of it. Uh, my plan was to support the shows that I think should be supported at that time. I think McNeil Lehrer was just coming on the air. And I claimed, I would claim I was watching that all, all the time. I've never once seen it, not once in my life. <laughs> it sounds so boring to me, but I thought it should be supported. And then I wanted to support shows that I thought I might pitch. I was working a little bit in television. Um, you can't get an assignment on a show that gets canceled, so you might as well support the ones that you're hoping to work for. Also, I had friends who were writing for television and producing television and running shows, sitcoms and stuff like that, and uh, I love my friends and I wanted to, <laughs> to support them if I could, so I claimed I was watching their shows. Do you, do you think the Nielsen ratings are correct? Oh no, no, no. Very, 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 to me, very biased towards other programming. I'm going to tell you like it is now. You got, I'm going to just go up front, you got a show called Skin. Okay. Who was knocked off. And you got the next Joe Millionaire, which is not doing so good in the ratings. I mean, reality the show is just, just, it stinks. It's the ratings. Uh, everything about the ratings is like, uh, to me, is phony. You're always going to question the validity of them, really. What do you know about the Nielsen ratings? Not a damn thing. <laughs> Excuse my French. And do you, are, have you ever had a sh I don't know anybody that has a Nielsen box, so I don't know anything about it. I, I, I still try to figure out how they come up with some of the shows and how some of them stay on so long. If it's based on the Nielsen ratings, who's rating this? I don't think the Nielsen ratings is a fair system. Do you believe in how the, the rating system works? Uh, no, I don't like the rating system because a lot of shows on TV that they do wrong in the rating systems, you know. Are you familiar with the Nielsen ratings? Yes, I am. And how do you feel about that? Well, I think that uh, they are a little biased and prejudiced in regards to where the boxes are placed in what homes. I'd like to see some of the Nielsen boxes placed in black homes so that at least black uh, 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 TV shows can get uh, a good standing in, in homes all around as opposed to just black homes. As someone who has spent years studying the television industry, could you sing for us your favorite TV theme song? You deserve a break today, so get out and get away to McDonald's. We do it all for you. A commercial, how appropriate. <laughs> it's commercial time, boys and girls, but when we come back, we're gonna take a little walk across the street to find out what Nielsen Media Research is hiding from us. We're back in downtown Los Angeles in front of the Nielsen Building. Every day we're being told by Variety, Television Week, Entertainment Weekly, the LA Times, the New York Times, what we're watching. And who's telling these publications? The Nielsen's. According to this week's results, CSI is number one and Survivor is number two. But is this really the case? We decided not to talk to the number crunchers, but to the actual television watching audience. And, and do you watch uh, CSI at all? No. CSI, do you watch CSI? No. I, I, I never even heard of it. Oh, crime scene investigation? I like the show Law and Order. What, what CSI? <laughs> you look like a big fan of uh, CSI, is that right? Um, no. Have you ever heard of a TV show called CSI? No, I haven't. Do you like CSI? No, I've never seen that one. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Do you watch uh, CSI? Not at all. Do any of you watch CSI? No. no. And what about CSI? I don't do CSI. I don't like CSI. Do you know anybody who likes CSI? Um, no, not really. No. 
But do you know do you know anybody that actually watches it? I know I don't know anyone who watches it. But it's apparently the most watched show in the country, right? Well, so they say. I don't know. Who watches that show? I don't watch it. Just, I didn't even know what it was until a couple weeks ago. I'm here with Marley Sims and Fred Rubin. How do the ratings affect things? With a new show, ratings is like the front gate. Now, if, if the ratings aren't good from the very beginning, or if they start to slide every week, then they'll do testing. Testing is like the next tier. Uh, and that's where it gets crazy. You know, they, uh, yeah. sitting in on a testing session is, is practically absurd. There'll be a, a flurry to change things. I, I worked on the Olsen twins last show, Two of a Kind, which was exactly that situation. It was, it was practically guaranteed to be a hit because it had the Olsen twins and there was nobody more popular in the, the, the age group that they wanted. But as the ratings started to slip, the network started saying, do it this way. No, don't make it about the, the Olsen twins. Make it more about the adults. No, 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 emphasize just one of the adults and then one of the Olsen I mean, it, it just got crazy. There's notorious stories of shows that before they went on the air, tested through the roof and then just died. And there's stories of shows that were fantastic, huge hits that, that never tested well. How do the ratings affect the creative process? Somebody else who just got their first show on the air who wants to do anything he can to, you know, please the network and say, well, whatever you do, I don't want to lose it, you know, if we have to, you know, change the girl to a boy, change the dog to a horse, I'll do it, I'll do it. So I, I think in that way, then that person comes back to the writing table and says, hey, we're going to lose one of the kids. Well, you know, we'll just lose one of the kids. I mean, they've done that in a couple of episodes. Well, it's notorious. Before. Family Matters, the girl went upstairs and never came down. Judy. <laughs> Uh, in Family Matters. Well, Chuck in, in, was uh, a brother in Happy Days. Yeah. Remember Chuck from Happy Days? <laughs> no, I don't. I rest my case. He's still upstairs. <laughs> He's still upstairs. These people literally go upstairs and they never come down. Yeah. And then there's things too when things start to fall apart, like stunt casting. If the show is not doing well or it's down a little bit, they think, well, what can we do to change this? And network will sometimes come up with these insane ideas of doing things like Storm Week. We did Storm Week on Home Improvement. Every show on the network that, that was going to have a storm in it on Tuesday night. Yeah. Now, are these cookie cutter things that the networks have no, for I, ideas? or I don't know who dreams them up, but, but there, it's an effort to... This is classic in television. When one show is not doing well, they try to tie it to a show that is is doing well. For example, I was originally on the original staff of Different Strokes. And at the same time Different Strokes was just kicking butt, a show named Hello Larry premiered with McLean Stevenson. <laughs> he actually left MASH to star in Hello Larry. And Hello Larry, which had nothing to do with Different Strokes, just was on a steady decline with ratings, so they did a crossover. That's another thing a, a mm -hmm. network will do. A crossover with different strokes. They merged the, cat, the shows, two shows together for an episode, thinking, oh great, if we put the Hello Larry people on different strokes, <laughs> people will watch it and then they'll get, you know, they'll start watching Hello Larry. Well, of course, it didn't, it didn't work. Those, those things seldom work. I or think go for, on location, you get to go on location. Get to go on location somewhere. Uh, you know, that's another funny thing shows do. They go to Las Vegas, they go to ha Hawaii, Hawaii, they go to Disney World. You know, as if, because they're going to Disney World, More people, people are just going to turn, oh my God, they're going to Disney World on Family Matters this week. We got to watch. I mean, I, I, never, I never understand that. Vegas, Hawaii, and Disney World. Well, Raymond to went to Italy. Yeah, but that was cool. There's also an expression they use quite commonly now called jumping the shark, mm -hmm. which was one day on, on Happy oh, Days. Right. They went to California, <laughs> and Fonz was on, in his leather jacket on water skis jumping over a shark. <laughs> and and that was it's a great image because it, it came to stand for when a show has passed its time. When the direction of it has gotten so ridiculous, it's time to, it's over. Let it, it, jumped, go. it jumped the shark. <laughs> On certain, most of the shows that I worked on, even on Home Improvement, where the show was a hit, you know, Tim would come in and say, I want to get Elton John. Elton John? Who's the Elton John? Is gonna, <laughs> you no, know, he did, I think, did the Tonight Show with Elton John. Elton said, sure, I'll, I'll come on your show. Well, you know, we didn't get Elton John. We got Alan Jackson, you know, who, you know, albeit I'd never heard of him. But, you <laughs> well, know, stunt I, casting I, always starts out at the grandest. You know, we're going to have Jimmy Stewart on the show, and it ends <laughs> up Lloyd Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean that's literally I don't know, that, that, that's know. literally how, how how it how it goes, you know, um, uh, and and it almost never works. But they 
these are traditional things that they try. They try crossovers, they try stunt casting, they try themes that tie all the hit shows together with the shows that are not doing well. What are the indicators that you're working on a hit show? Baskets. You get baskets. Jackets. Jackets. <laughs> what, what, what's in a good basket? Oh, well, a good basket. We Writers never get the good baskets. No, the execs get the good The execs baskets. and the stars get the good baskets. You get, you know, leather carryalls. You get, uh, you know, little CD little player, bags. you know. Um, but me, I'm happy with poppycock, you know. Good <laughs> tin of poppycock, I'm happy, you know. <laughs> And what shows have you liked that have been canceled? Oh man, oh it was a, it was a, oh um yes, Family Guy. Platinum, I really liked that show and they scraped that very fast. Uh, I really liked uh, Keen Eddie and the mullets that was coming on UPN. They scraped that fast. Babylon Five, that was my favorite. And it was a show that they tried to make like Friends on NBC. That was I watched that one time. That was pretty decent, and they scraped that very fast. It's commercial time, boys and girls, but when we come back, we're going to take a little walk across the street to find out what Nielsen Media Research is hiding from you and me. It's been three weeks. Three weeks without a single phone call or return email from Nielsen Media Research. We've been trying to get in touch with them and they don't, they don't even want to talk to us. So, well, they know what makes good television, so why don't we go in there, break down their door, if that's the way they want it, <clears throat> we'll give it to them. Hi. You, don't, you don't have to budge. You can oh, oh, thanks a lot. Are you here to see someone? Yeah, is um, is Sean Hunter in? Yeah. Did you have an appointment with Sean? Okay. We have the school the project. Client this morning. Oh yes. So he's not here. Oh, okay. We, we we wanted to we wanted to really just talk to somebody on camera about you know the the ratings. Just how they here. work. Right. Okay. They work. Let's. Sean's gonna have to be the one that deals with that because we're not. Well, let, let me go. Let me just talk to my boss. See if we have someone else here that can talk to you. Uh, my name is Steve Dyer. I'm a vice president with uh, the Nielsen Agency. I imagine that that being the Nielsens, uh, you guys are under a lot of stress from from your clients and the, and the public. Is that true? Oh, I don't know if it's. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't characterize it as that. However, we're we're like an umpire mm -hmm. uh, at a ball game ticket taker at a box office. You know, we're just counting the audience. Sometimes people will disagree with that estimate. You know, there's been some articles in the trades recently about right. um, a drop-off in viewership of young males. We believe that the there is a true tr uh, drop-off, that there's a lot of things that uh, compete for the time and attention of young males, and as a result that we're providing accurate numbers. I'm not too sure it's true that uh, that young males aren't watching more television. I think I think they are, especially with shows like uh, the, the male skewing networks like Fox, which is for young males, MTV, Comedy Central. Uh, I think that uh, that uh, males are just uh, young males like like us all are just consuming more media. And so I, I still see television as, as delivering that kind of a, that kind of demographic. The, the success of the Fox network attests to the fact that the that young males are still watching television. But you really need two things. One, you need a demographic composition of the audience that's being measured. And two, you need to have an objective third party who has no vested interest. But is that difficult sometimes when you're, when you're being paid by the different parties to be impartial? Uh, no, because it's, it's 50 years of credibility. One of the things that we saw in the newspaper is that Nielsen doesn't disclose its profits. Why is that? 
I, I don't know that I would uh, totally agree with the statement that we don't disclose that information. Oh, okay. Sometimes the networks will cancel a show in its infancy. I think that has happened. I think the networks look at the uh, fan reaction, uh, but uh, again, you know, it all boils down to dollars and cents. And if the cost of producing the show is not covered by the advertising revenue that comes in in the form of the, the commercial sponsors, it, it really, you know, whether there's a a, a very um, uh, w whether there's a core base of, of really strong support, it, if the numbers don't justify it, you know, it just may not make economic sense. And in that case, you know, ultimately the show has a good chance of being canceled. Wow. They were so nice and friendly, it makes you question the credibility of Michael Moore. I mean, uh, we came without an appointment, they, they found somebody to sit down and talk with us, they were nice, uh, really a good company, good people, Nielsen Media Research. You almost had us! When we spoke with Stephen Dyer, VP of Nielsen Media Research, we asked him if he had any diaries that we could take a look at. He said they're all out in the field, but they don't keep them in his office. Well, not only did our PA find stacks and stacks of the Nielsen Diaries, she also found stacks of Diarios de Nilsones. Hmm, I wonder about the other things he told us. Is there a better system out there, and does it matter? It doesn't matter. This is the way the game is played. People can complain about it. If you're an MTV producer, you probably want your sample weighted more towards young males so you'll get a bigger rating. But everybody agrees that this is the system we're going to, we're going to employ and uh, we're making money and we can carp at it, but nobody wants to destroy the system because everybody's doing quite well, really. Is it all just one big pyramid scheme? Yeah. I think Nielsen is a large pyramid scheme, as a matter of fact. If you think about it, since, uh, for example, let's say that 50% of network advertising is controlled by the top 25 corporations. So these are the same corporations, fundamentally, that have been advertising on television since it began. It's operating for them. But then you can ask yourself, who really owns and controls these corporations? Actually, a very small elite group does. I think it's something like 1% of America owns 50% of the wealth. 50% of America owns 2% of the wealth. Yeah, a pyramid scheme? How does the corporatization of the media affect your choice in ties? Usually, I like to reflect by my ties <laughs> I'm into money. <laughs> I'm a Nielsen. I dress Nielsen. <laughs> I believe in Nielsen fashion. If we're a society that's totally dedicated to bucks, let's adorn ourselves with it. <laughs> We know Hispanics watch more than Telemundo, and that blacks watch more than the Hughleys. But the Nielsens don't seem to know what else they're watching, and sooner or later, that's going to catch up to them. So what does this tell us? It used to be a white man's world, but a lot has changed. The minority population is exploding. Perhaps because they have nothing to watch on TV. So what have we learned, boys and girls? The captain's asleep at the ratings wheel, but the advertisers just don't seem to care. There's only one lifeboat, and Vigil be her name. Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. What are your favorite shows typically? The OC. 
The OC? Yeah, I love the OC! Tell, what, what, tell me about the OC. Well, number one, Ryan is hot! I love Ryan. And the story is... Okay, I guess. I like reality TV shows. <laughs> and did, did... I like Looney Tunes a lot. It's my favorite show. And who, who's your favorite Looney Tune character? Tweety Bird. I like Tweety. Can you do an impression of Tweety Bird? Uh, I thought I saw a putty cat. <laughs> Did you watch Skin this fall? I did watch. I watched the one episode. I guess it got canceled, right? It didn't get picked up, but they only showed a couple shows. I watched one, but I, I noticed it was really dark. I couldn't. Sometimes I couldn't see what was going on. Do you notice it was very dark? It was very dark. It was like, was they, they didn't use any lighting? Oh, I'm a big soap opera fan. The Young and the Restless. The Young and the Restless is a good show. Victor Newman. Girl fights. Girl fights? Yeah. Do did, did they have any of that on TV right now? Just in wrestling, but they're cheap. What other kind of girl fights would you like to see? Like where they rip out their clothes and stuff. Like those commercials. Like what commercials? Like that survival one and the beer one. Where the girls start fighting and rip out their clothes. Uh, what do you know about Nielsen Media Research? Uh, well, I know that they send out uh, information to TV viewers who have to fill it out as to what they're watching and when and that sort of thing.